To help you maximize your Genshin account, this video will break down everything about the weapon banner, its unique pity system, expected 4 and 5 star rates, how much of an improvement weapons give relative to their cost, and more. By the end of this guide, you will be able to make a definitive conclusion on whether you should be wishing on the weapon banner or not. Soft pity for the weapon banner begins on wish number 63, with each following wish increasing the odds of a 5 star by 7%. The odds of getting a 5 star before soft pity is approximately 35%. 5 star weapons obtained appear most frequently on wish 66. At a baseline, each rate up weapon has a 3 in 8 chance of appearing, and a random weapon has a 2 in 8 chance of appearing. Getting a random weapon means the next 5 star weapon you'll get will be one of the two rate ups. The epitomized path's purpose is to guarantee that the selected 5-star weapon appears by the third 5-star obtained at the latest. Effectively, it prevents you from missing a desired weapon more than twice in a row. Unfortunately, it resets between banners, unlike the guarantee from losing the 7525, which carries over between banners. The epitomized path is not as important as it may seem. Without it, 2 in 5 weapons will be the desired rate up on average. Factoring it in, the rate increases to approximately 1 in 2. It's mainly there as a ploy to get players to continue wishing on the weapon banner due to sunk cost, so be mindful of this fallacy if you're on a primogen budget. Knowing that it takes two 5 stars until the desired one is obtained on average, a reasonable estimate for the number of wishes needed to obtain a 5 star weapon is 132. The true average is 106, but this only applies to players going for multiple copies of a weapon. If both rate up weapons are desired, then you will spend 66 wishes on average. 4 star soft pity for the weapon banner begins on wish number 8, going up to a 66% chance, then becoming guaranteed on wish number 9. It takes a bit less than 7 wishes on average per 4 star, however, just like the 5 stars, a rated up 4 star has a 75% chance of appearing, with the remaining 25% being a random character. As usual, getting an off rate up makes it so the next 4 star drop is one of the 5 on rate up. In total, 80% of all 4 star drops are the ones on rate up. Since all 5 have an equal chance of appearing, 16% of all 4 stars will be a specific rate up 4 star weapon. You can expect it to take 42 wishes on average per specific 4 star weapon. Committing to a specific 5 star weapon is expected to yield R3 of each rate up 4 star. Going for a single 5 star weapon is likely to yield R1 of each 4 star, which is an excellent segue into discussing the misplaced value of the weapon banner. When looking at the weapon banner, it's easy to focus on the 5 stars and mostly disregard the 4 stars. If you are someone looking to make their account stronger, or just have an easier time with the game, then overlooking 4 star weapons is a huge mistake. Additionally, most 5 star weapons tend to be overrated. Allow me to explain why. Let's imagine a Hu Tao double hydro team, where Hu Tao is dealing 500,000 damage and Sing Chou and Yilan also deal 500,000 damage, for a total of 1 million damage per rotation. Suppose that giving Hu Tao a Staff of Homa gives her a 25% boost to her damage overall, which is a somewhat generous assumption, but within reason. This would result in an increase to her personal damage to 625,000 but it would only increase the team's DPS by 12.5%. This percentage increase is still quite significant, of course. This example is just to show how a more selfish weapon like Homa, while still being one of the most powerful upgrades, can get its value artificially inflated when just looking at Hu Tao's numbers instead of considering the bigger picture in terms of team DPS. For some other teams and characters, this can be less of an issue. Xiao and Wanderer both possess meta teams where they contribute above 75% of the team's damage output, and Ayaka teams can also come close, resulting in their weapons mattering quite a bit more. However, the majority of Genshin's top teams involve more even splits of personal damage contribution. Weapons that can increase every team member's damage typically provide better value. Currently, only a handful of weapons can provide stats to the whole team. Floating Dreams, Key, Elegy, Wolf's Gravestone, and Freedom's Horn are the 5-star options. The Zypho series and Favonia series are the Gacha 4-star team weapons. And Hakushin Ring is the only free weapon that provides team-wide value. It's also worth noting weapons that provide stats to a different team member, not just the wearer of the weapon. These craftable Sumeru weapons all drop leaves that another character can pick up for a decent stat boost, and Thrilling Tales gives a different character a significant amount of attack. Because all of these weapons are more or less free to obtain, they won't be a focus of this video. 
The short version of these weapons is that it essentially lets a low damage support give their weapon stats to the main carry of the team. What you'll notice from the team DPS list is that a bunch of these weapons are obtained through 4 star gacha. Because of the greater quantity alone, a weapon banner with subpar 4 stars is significantly worse than one with many support oriented options, or other 4 star weapons that outpace free options, such as the Sacrificial series, Wavebreaker series, the Wid Sith, and a few others. Refinements often provide significant value, and have an argument for going after. Additionally, 4 star team support weapons have a strong argument for getting multiple copies of them, either for refinements or to equip them on multiple characters at the same time. All of this is to say, 4 star weapons have a bigger impact on a given account than what one may realize. A common conception for determining which weapons are good is by looking at how many different characters can make use of said weapon. While this can be relevant, it's still worth considering how much of an improvement the weapon actually is on each character that you plan to use it with. Sticking with Homa as an example, Xiang Leng can use the weapon, but it is nowhere near the same magnitude of an upgrade as it is for Hu Tao, due to not having any HP scaling, having access to the catch, and needing a hefty amount of energy recharge. Of course, Homa is not the only 5-star weapon that is considered for general use. Most 5-star weapons with crit substats can be used by most damage dealing characters to good effect, with the exception of weapons that either have a very niche condition to proc their passive, or the passive just boosting a very niche stat. Without being able to make full use of the passive, the general use choices often end up being marginally better than the best 4-star options. So, a weapon being universal shouldn't be the driving force behind wishing for it, but having the quality is certainly a nice upside. The obvious drawback to wishing on the weapon banner is that those wishes are being taken away from the character banner. In terms of rates alone, the weapon banner typically requires more wishes per specific desired item, either 4 star or 5 star, despite having higher baseline rates. When accounting for multiple good outcomes, the expected cost significantly reduces. We can simplify this relation as a ratio. On average, it's about 1 to 1 character to specific weapon, and 2 to 3 character to rate up weapon. When looking at the worst case scenario for both, the ratio ends up favoring characters more, at a 4 to 3 character to weapon ratio. Essentially, the weapon banner ends up being more efficient the less you wish on it. Even in the better cases, the weapon banner doesn't end up much ahead of the character banner in terms of cost per 5 star. Despite weapons like Elegy giving 9 offensive substats to every teammate, Freedom Storm giving up to 6 per teammate, and Wolf's Gravestone conditionally giving about 8 substats of attack, none of them realistically outpace the value of a 5-star support-oriented character. The other two weapons, Floating Dreams and Key, function more as a typical hyper-carry weapon, with Key being noticeably stronger than most signatures, as Neelu Team's main source of damage is via Bloom, which is independent of characters' personal damage contributions. Therefore, current 5-star support weapons shouldn't be the target, but rather, they should be considered as a nice byproduct of wishing on the weapon banner for a different reason. We'll get more into selfish signature weapons shortly. For now, let's focus back on 4 stars. 42 wishes per desired 4 star weapon is the expected average on the weapon banner. 488 is expected for a specific weapon on the character banner, meaning that the character banner is approximately 11 times more expensive to get weapons. This does give valid reason to go on the weapon banner over always choosing the character banner. In situations where Favonius weapons end up being one of, if not the most significant upgrade to a team, a weapon banner with several Favonius weapons and at least one desirable 5 star choice can be worth considering for free to play players. Being able to budget your Primo Gems is crucial for figuring out situations where Primo Gems can be spent. If you allocate your budget to the characters you desire to obtain, you will be able to find situations in which going for the weapon banner will not cause a loss in a desired 5 star. The bigger cost of going on the weapon banner is missing out on 4 star characters, where trying to get a specific one on the weapon banner is roughly 30 times more expensive. Because 4 star characters have more valuable constellations, or are borderline necessary for creating meta team compositions, they end up with a higher priority. If you are missing any of the very high importance characters, then it is not worthwhile to wish on the weapon banner yet. Additionally, there are certain 4 star characters that can provide valuable team support or damage, such as Yao Yao, Bei Dou, Kuki, and Xiang Ling's 3rd and 4th constellations, which are all good, but not necessary to the same degree as the aforementioned characters. As soon as your account picks up the top priority characters, a degree of flexibility is reached where 4 star weapon value goes up considerably. In terms of 5 star characters, only a handful possess value comparable to the top 4 star characters. It is generally worth considering these characters before looking at 5 star weapons. 
None of them are strictly necessary, but can all enable various team compositions, just like the best 4 stars. Once the desired amount of horizontal investment is reached, when you don't want to build any more teams, that's when you start going for weapons to make those teams stronger. Because of how the probabilities are distributed, it's not worth attempting to snipe something specific off the weapon banner in a couple of pulls. I say that more than half of the available 4 star options should be of relevant upgrade tier, in order for wishes to be considered efficient. Furthermore, I say the weapon banner is something reserved for the late game. If your account already has the necessary characters to form sufficient teams, you lack team support or character enabling weapons, namely Favonius weapons and their alternatives, and there is one or more desirable 5 star on raid up, then the weapon banner is worth considering, if it is within your prima gem budget. Bonus points to the weapon banner if you own a hyper carry character that has an available signature weapon that provides a standard 15-20% to damage increase. And if there are 4 star weapons on the banner that are refinement hungry, such as the Sacrificial Weapons and the Wavebreaker series. If you want to learn more about budgeting prima gems with respect to the character banner, watch this guide next.